This is the Chopping It Up show brought to you by the Marching Podcast. And now here is your host, the Phantom Podcaster himself, Joe Beard. Welcome to the Chopping It Up Show. Hold on, let me get my stuff back here. All right, welcome to the Chopping It Up Show. I'm your host, Joe Beer. Happy to be of service for you today. Let me see if I can get my, my other camera up in here. Let me, well, not that one. Hold on, let me. Yeah, you have to excuse my. Oh, there we go. Oh, I can use that one just real quick. Welcome to the Chopping It Up Show. I'm your host, Joe Beer. Happy to be of service for you today. Today is December 6, 2020, uh, the last broadcast of the year. Uh, usually somebody says something about 2020 or somebody says something about the year. They're like, oh, well, you know, kind of the best. But this year uh, has been the worst. So let me get, get the booze out. But that's just how it is. Uh, and, uh, but we happy we still here. So shout out to all the folks that are listening or all the people that are watching. And, uh, we appreciate your time and your support of the network. Uh, I have another great guest today who I introduce in here in a second. Um, but we're doing a little something different today. And it also adds to the show because I always wanted to have a slide show while we talk. Because we got the different camera angles and that helps. But when we were broadcasting the show only through Blog Talk Radio, uh, we were, uh, it, it made me do a slideshow. So I was just thinking probably last month or right after we interviewed Tony Carwell, I said, man, I, I, it would be cool if I had like a slideshow, especially pictures of me and the guest. So now we're going to work it out. Uh, with our guest today so now we done created the slideshow now we'll just build upon that uh in the future for the chopping it up show and the martian podcast radio network so again thanks again uh for all those checking it out watching the show whether you're listening uh or uh watching the show live through itunes 
YouTube, our blog, Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, Periscope, or wherever you are on the interwebs. This podcast is brought to you by Block Band Music and Publishing, BlockUsUp.com, SAY Marketing and Promotions, uh, where we, yeah, SAY Marketing and Promotions, Kevin P. of Remax Patriots, Math Sci Tutoring and Educational Services from Michael Okoro, and Bull City Music School. All right. So shout out to all of those people. Shout out to all of our beloved sponsors. I'll go ahead and give them a round of applause. And just remember, uh, all of our sponsorship now is for free. So I would love to help promote your business and all of what we are doing throughout all the things that are going on. But who knows? I might even do it in the future for free for a while. So we'll be extending um, our free sponsorship to everybody in the future uh, until, you know, indefinitely, as they say, until we figure out what's going on. I'm not going to get into uh, the vaccines or when, quote unquote, things get back to normal. Uh, Just trying to keep myself in the present and not worry about the future, because, you know, that's what stresses me out when I start thinking about things I can't control or stuff that ain't happened yet. All right. Uh, So going from that, let me introduce a wonderful guest today. Always love our guests, but it's always special when we able to talk with someone uh, that marched with me in the band. I already let that out the bag a little bit already. Uh, But this person is very special to me. Uh, The one and only Louis Lindsay. How you doing in this podcast, sir? Pretty good. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thanks for having me. Thanks for everyone for listening. I appreciate uh, being on today. Yeah, outs- outstanding guest, uh, and we'll definitely get into all the great things that you're doing. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm already trying to let stuff out the bag already. But once we get in the conversation, folks will know who you are. Uh, but Louis was definitely close to me. Um, we talked about other folks that was in the band with us. Uh, but Louie was actually real close to me and we'll get into that, uh, as we get into the particulars of the interview. Uh, so, uh, we'll always, uh, as normal on a chopping it up show, we'll find out where Louie's from, his family, where he went to school, what he wanted to do when he got out of school and all the wonderful things that he's doing now after he got out of school, all right? And if you have any questions, you guys can log into the chat room. First of all, let me say shout out to the chat room. Round of applause. Uh, The chat room uh, definitely makes the show, and it's always good to see people chime in and say, hey, I'm listening, or folks I ain't heard from, or folks that know the guests specifically. Um, They always make the show special. So if you have anything to say to Louie or anything even to ask Louie, go ahead and uh, enter yourself in the chat room, no matter where you are, whether you're on YouTube or Facebook uh, or wherever you are, I'll be able to see you through the app I have uh, and we'll be able to respond. And then I'll be able to ask Louie based on, you know, what we see there. Uh, his the questions that you guys have for him. So shout out to everybody in the chat room. I always appreciate you being there. Um, so let's go ahead and go to our first commercial break from our beloved sponsors. Again, if you have a business uh, and you would like to promote here on our show, go ahead and send us the information and I'll contact you and we'll work out the details and uh, we'll put the information on the show below. Let me see if I can do Let me change to that camera. Well, I'll do it here in a second. Uh, but yeah, uh, usually we play the uh, uh, at the ticker at the bottom, but I'll see if I can pull up the ticker here in a second uh, for, for everybody watching on the show. But for right now, we'll uh, go into our first commercial break, uh, and then we'll come back and chopping it up uh, with Louis Lindsay. So go ahead, we'll mute our microphones and check out our beloved sponsors. And directly, have you ever found yourself in this situation? Showtime is quickly approaching. Your budget is quickly disappearing. Your music choices are narrowing. The equipment condition is wearing and your stress level is mounting. 
stop what you're doing and contact Block Band Music and find out how we've got you. Check www.blockbandmusic.com, providing music, equipment, gear, and accessories to show style, core style, and traditional bands worldwide. The source for fair and factual information on your favorite college bands, blockusup.com. Well-written articles, in-depth band performance analysis, helpful resources for band directors, fun band-related topics, and exclusive interviews with some of today's brightest and most talented leaders of college marching bands. Visit us at blockusup.com, the meeting place for band fans and band directors. Hello everyone, this is Joe Beard from the Marching Podcast. Is your school, club, or organization looking for high quality decorated apparel to outfit your students, staff, club, or team? Tired of the same old boring white t-shirt? Are you in charge of the upcoming fundraiser or special event, but don't really have time to troll the internet for ideas or compare products? SAY can help with design and product selection. We can even assist with ideas on conducting an effective fundraising program. SAY can help you save time and get your message heard. So call 1-800-975-3156. SAY Marketing and Promotions. Give your brand a voice. If you're thinking about buying or selling real estate in the Southern California area, please contact Kevin Pete of Remax Patriots. He will meet and exceed all of your needs. You can contact Kevin at 951-858-5942. That's 951-858-5942. Or you can email Kevin at kpsellshomes at sbcglobal.net. That's KP, his initials, Kevin Pete, KP Sells Homes all one word, at sbcglobal.net. Thanks again. All right, we are back from our beloved commercial break. Uh, Back to chop it up with the one and only Louie Lindsay. Uh, Louie, you can unmute your microphone. All right, so uh, uh, let's go ahead and get right into it then. Uh. Uh, you got your you oh okay okay now nah, I hear you, all right team uh let's go ahead and get into it uh all right Louis where are you from? I'm from Dallas Texas uh from the neighborhood of Oak Cliff. Okay uh now um what's dope is I came down to Dallas I think 2014 uh and I saw you I got to uh, come to your house. Uh, and, and check you out. I do have to ask, man, because you probably one of the first people other than like Puff Daddy that I know that this. Do you still have the studio uh, in your house? Man, it's funny you say that. I just uh, I just made it, turned it back into a closet, but I did have a studio. Yes, sir. Yeah, I remember. I remember you said that you had still. I like, damn, like, damn, Louis, like you have to turn into Dr. Dre. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Uh, so, so that's what's up now. Uh, you in Dallas now, um, uh, are your folks and are your family, are all of them from Dallas as well? My mom from Dallas and my dad is from Greenville, Mississippi. Wow. Your pop's from Greenville? Yes, sir. Greenville, Mississippi. Wow. That's crazy. See, and and you know, what's funny is no matter how well I, I know the people I'm talking to, I always find out something new in these interviews. Um, now I believe I know my dad. Our both our dads knew each other. Correct. Um, yeah. yeah. So I remember that. So maybe I think maybe that's where they met. And it's too bad I I, I can't ask them to see specifically. Uh, where now your pops went to Jackson State as well, right? Correct. 
Okay. Yeah, he was also in the band. Okay, all right. And so now, yeah, we got for all the folks that's out there uh, watching the show, I got the picture of you and your pops up there. When was he at Jackson State? He's at Jackson State from 66 to 70. Okay, okay. So they probably... Okay, well, yeah, well, then he, yeah, well, then that's how they know each other. They were in the band because my dad was 62 when he came in, and 66 was his last year. And I'm guessing that he marched all four years. Um, So, yeah, so, yeah, they he was around then when your pops was there. So that's probably how they know each other. And I believe that my dad was in Greenville for a while after school. But yeah, dog, I didn't know your pops was uh from from the good old SIP. I thought he was from Dallas. I, I just assumed he was from Dallas. <laughs> uh, so that's what's up, man. So that's what's up. Okay. Uh, so getting into a growing up there in Dallas, uh, Dallas again is in the South with a lot of HBCUs, uh, you know, and uh, all of that influence. When would you say was your first like HBCU band experience? When did you? When did you see a HBCU band for the first time? I would I would say in middle school. Every, uh, like, like I said, I'm from Dallas, and we have a state fair classic that featured two HBCUs by the name of Prairie View and Gramlin. Okay. So every year we would uh, go to the fair and then go to the game to see those two uh, HBCU bands. So growing up, those were the only two bands that the kids from Dallas would see. Okay. All right. Now, um, as you were in middle school and you seeing, did you did you think that you were thinking about going to one of those schools? Like, did you know that you wanted to be a part of that? Well, I knew I wanted to be go to an HBCU school. Uh, my first choice was Grambling State. Uh, was the band I was uh, that I wanted to attend. OK, OK. So when did you start playing an instrument? Um, I, I know what instrument you play, so I mean, we'll get. I'll let you tell it. Uh, but when when did you start playing uh, an instrument? Then I started, I started in elementary, elementary school, school in the fifth grade, so that's when I began playing the trumpet. Okay, okay, yeah. So you was like me. Uh, so was your band like? Did they start beginner band in the fifth grade for you? Yeah, yeah we, we started, started out uh, beginner band. band. Uh, playing scales, um, practicing embouchure and things like that. Right, right. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Um, cause I know that was the same thing. Uh, now, now your dad was in the band. What instrument did he play? He played the clarinet. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, my dad played trumpet in the band. Um, so I knew that I kind of wanted to do that. Plus, I had a lot of cousins that was in the band because he was from Jackson. So a lot of that was from like either Callaway or like Provine or something. And you know how they are down there in Jackson with the band. So uh so yeah, I knew that I was probably gonna start playing trumpet and yeah, same for me. Uh we started in fifth grade, uh, just like you then. Okay, so that's what's up then. All right, so you playing in fifth grade, um, what high school did you end up going to? I attended David W. Carter High School in Dallas. Okay, now is that the same uh David W. Carter that's uh that's on Friday Night Lights? Yes, sir, that's us. Oh nice, nice. Let's give you a round of applause there. Uh that's pretty dope. Uh so I'm so I'm guess you saw the actual movie then, uh yeah. Friday Night Lights. Boy they had boy, they had them looking old. They had them yeah. like <laughs> dudes. They I remember they busted through the uh busted through the little thing and dudes came. I had beards on and everything. They man, they made them look like like hideous and scary on the movie. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The movie was good. I was actually uh, an extra in the movie. Oh really? Yes, sir. All right. How did you uh, How did you get to do that? Well, uh, they were casting out, doing casting out calls and. And uh, we volunteered to be extras. Okay. Okay. That's what's up. That's what's up, man. Um, Now, uh, now, damn, damn, I I didn't know you went to that high school. So, uh, so I, so I got to ask you, is your football team still the same? Like, are they still pretty dominant? Because I know that was like the 80s or something, something like that they, when they did that. 
Uh, but how is your yeah. football team still now? It's still pretty good off off and on. Like we say, we have our years. We have our rebuilding years. Right. So, you know, pretty much we still dominant down here in this in the Metroplex. Okay. Okay. And um, I got to ask you then, too, did you see the – I think it was a ESPN had a 30 for 30 uh, about that team and about that high school. Did you see that, too? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I also watched that as well. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's crazy, man. I did not know that, uh, that you went to that school. I just knew you were from Dallas. And then I finally understood. Now, your, your section town is Eau Claire. Is that what it's called? Or, or Oak Cliff. <laughs> Oh, Cliff, yes, sir. Oh, Cliff, okay, yeah. I understood that then. Uh, my sister, she stay in Little M, which is like hella north, like super far right. past Plano. Like, it's right. like a whole other town or whatever. You know, she say Dallas. I mean, you know how that is. Um, right. Right, right. But I remember when I came down to see you, man, that was a long drive. Like, I didn't, I didn't understand how far outside of Dallas she stayed, but I remember that was a minute. Uh, you drive into your crib. Uh, yeah, that's a, it's a little way. Yeah, <laughs> right, right. I know, I know. It's at least like forty five minutes or so. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so that's what's up, man. Okay, now you at uh, uh, Carter High School. Now, um, did you march in the band when you were in high school as well? Yes, I marched four years in the in the marching band, jazz band. Symphonic band, you know. Okay. Any band, any band you could be, be in, I was in. Okay, that's what's up. Now, um, did you know, uh, after all your experiences and all that to this point, did you know that you wanted to march in college? Yes, that was one of my main goals to march in college because you know, growing up, that was one of my goals to march in high school and to. March in college. Okay, so you already knew that you that you wanted to to march then in college. Now, uh, your marching band experience there in high school were you guys a core? Well, well, let me ask you this: Was David David Carter was that a predominantly black high school? Yes, sir. Predominantly black high school. Okay, so your marching style then for the marching band were you like? Basically, like HBCU style, or were you guys like a core style marching band? Uh, my band director was from Southern, so we were pretty much a, a mini Southern, you would call it. Wow, really? Yes, wow. sir. Is he still there? No, he just retired. Okay, all right. So, all then, probably up until he retired, they were like a mini Southern. Are they still like that now? Yes. yes. Wow. That's crazy to know that that's that that football school is a mini southern like that. That's that's insane. Uh, what was your band director's name? Earl Sims and Douglas Baskin. Okay, okay. Wow, that's that's crazy. I, I didn't know that. Um, but yeah. I'm trying to think now. But you guys are you guys far from Southern? Like a drive? Uh, I would say seven hours from Dallas to New Orleans. I mean, uh, Baton Rouge. Baton Rouge. Okay. All right. And then. How far is it from Dallas to Jackson? It was like five or six hours, something like that. Same. About six hours. Okay, uh -huh. so like not too, probably like the same, kind of same, yeah. same Almost. amount of time. Okay, okay, all right, that that makes sense. Um, yeah, that's a trip. I didn't know that uh that you came from a band like that then. Um, so then yep. I guess uh, like you said, you already knew you wanted to march in college. What did you have a list of schools? that you wanted to uh to march like how was your college decision making process well i know i wanted to attend the hbcu uh i wanted to attend a band that travel so <clears throat> i tried out at, at a few hbcus uh grambling tsu uh prairie view southern and basically what i said i said whoever gives uh proposed to most scholarship money that's where i would go so scott jackson state was the one who provided the most money so that's where i attended okay now uh i know how my dad was uh growing up was your dad trying to get you to go to jackson state or did he just want just overall you know want you to go somewhere to go to school no nah, that's the funny thing he, he never did kind of you know like persuade me or 
you know, pressure me to go to go to go to Jackson State. Uh, he just said, "Go where I want." Uh, another thing, uh, all my friends in high school went to Southern. <laughs> right. So I'm the only one that kind of you know like ventured off and went to Jackson State, but majority of, of, of the seniors in the band went to Southern. Wow. Okay, and that makes sense if if y'all was a, a mini Southern or whatever. Oh yeah. Yeah, 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 that, that, yeah. That, that 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 makes sense. Um, uh, you know, my my pops, you know, like you know, uh, my my pops went to Jackson State, but he was basically trying to get me to go there, probably since I started playing the trumpet, uh, which was really funny. Um, I uh was you know in St. Louis, growing up in St. Louis, we went to Memphis every year because Memphis was just down fifty five for us. Okay. And, yeah, okay. so like it would be like four or five hours to Memphis. It wouldn't be that that bad of a road trip. So so yeah, we went to Memphis every year, and it was an opportunity for him to see his brothers because my dad has six brothers and sisters. So it was always a chance for him to at least see the band and at least see, you know, some uncles and stuff. And uh, neither one of my parents was from St. Louis or the, neither one of them are from St. Louis. So, like, I would see my cousins and I would see my family. We only had a small percentage of people that that like we knew in St. Louis that were considered family. So anytime we had a chance to get out. You know, we did like my mom's from Charlotte. So we were in Charlotte every year and then always going to Jackson State, always going to the games. That would be an opportunity for me to see family. You know what I'm saying? But anytime they was in Memphis, every year we was in Memphis. Um, I think one time they came to Chicago because, you know, the Windy City Classic, they was always kind of like changing the schools. So uh, I think. They were in there once we went to Chicago and then a couple of times we went to Indianapolis uh, to see the boom. Um, but yeah, my dad, my dad was trying to get me to go to Jackson State. And then, as you know, I went to Johnson C. Smith first because I wanted to kind of make my own path. And uh, that was your crab year in 96. Uh, my dad, my dad, either he went to the games or he had one of my uncles like take pictures and that's that's my dad would send me those letters in the mail while I was at Smith so like every week you know what I'm saying no matter who y'all was playing like he would send me pictures of the band and then always send me pictures of how many how many people was in the stands because you know (laughs) you know like all our games were packed and Johnson C. Smith games they would they (laughs) they would never like that you know what I'm saying? It would always be like maybe a hundred people there or something like that. Uh, right. So yeah, when I transferred, he was pretty happy uh about that. Um, so but that's cool, man. I didn't know if your pops was the same as far as him trying to get you to go to Jackson State. Uh so uh that's what's up, man. So uh so I knew that you were a crab of ninety six. So you finished Carter in uh nineteen ninety six then? Yes, sir. All right, and then use a crab of 96, and uh, shout out to the great cla- crab class of 96. Let me go and give y'all a round of applause. Uh, I know uh, I know a gang of people, a lot of good folks still that I keep up with nowadays. And then I know you and I are on the uh, the, the Trump Funk group, group chat. So, yes, sir. You know, so, you know, 96 still representing up in there. Um... You there then, and you get to Jackson in 96. What would you recall as probably your most memorable time marching in that year of 96? Well, well, well let me ask you two things, because uh, I'm seeing how well we're doing on the time. What would you say was your most memorable moment uh, crabbing there in 96? And then did you have another memorable moment there after 1996 in the years you marched? At Jackson State. Well, uh, the the biggest moments or mo- good moments uh, we did the halftime for the Indianapolis Coast game. That was fun, uh, you know, having that experience and that exposure. Mm-hmm. Uh, we also did the Senior Bowl. 
uh, back back in '98, I believe. Yeah. Um, my very first performance was at the Memorial Stadium. We did the Tennessee Titans game when Eric McNair was still oh, okay. the quarterback. <clears throat> And and uh, we did air two on the field. Oh so, wow! Yep. Yeah. And then um, Alabama State, Jackson State, my freshman year, um, <laughs> <laughs> led to some unwanted events after the game. <laughs> but neither here nor there. It was it was a great experience for all all sides. Yeah, man. Uh, I remember that. Um, I didn't hear about it because, you know, back then, you know, we didn't have social media like that. You know what I'm saying? So I never knew about it until like we got there and people well, until I got there and people were talking about it. And then you remember we played uh, Alabama State. Our first game. Did you play them the first game? Um, in '96 too. Yes, the first game was uh our first swag game, Alabama State. Okay, do you have anything? <laughs> and I guess I asked if you want to talk about it. I interviewed Ali, uh, Ali Liddell, and he uh-huh. like talked about it. I remember he talked about it. He had like his own tape. I gotta go back and listen to to what he said with Ali. Uh, but do you remember anything from that from that day? Like how it started and all like what went down with all uh, uh between uh the boom and Alabama State. All I remember is at the end of the game it was forty to zero. I remember that part. <laughs> uh, the halftime show, you know, we we, we did an awesome halftime show with uh, it's raining men and the whole gospel show we did. So the football team had won, we had won, and. You know, we were just trying to get back to our bus safely as possible. <laughs> so uh, I recall we marched into the to the bus, and uh, our band director uh, had been, uh, I, I guess you would say, told some un- unwanted words <laughs> by their band director. So basically, uh, he was saying. Uh, our band director was telling their band director, hey, man, you need to get your band band people off out of our way. We're just trying to get on the bus. So he said, no, we don't have to get out the way. Y'all a bunch of sunny bees. <laughs> so, you know, we kept marching. So we, we, we had passed up their band director. And next thing you know, the beat had stopped and dropped. And all I remember is Mace. Wow. <laughs> And it was it was a Mandalay after that, so it was it it, it was it was rough. Yeah, yeah, and and that's funny. Like I said, we I'm sure if like you know we had all the platforms we have now, people would have been talking about it, and more people would have known about it. Um, I didn't know anything about it until I got there in '97, and people were talking about it. And then I remember our first game being there. I think we we played in Birmingham our first game. Like we we weren't in Jackson or we weren't in wherever. I guess Alabama State is in Montgomery, I think. But I remember we were at uh, Legion Field for that first game, and I just remember how like tense uh, our band directors were, and I remember <laughs> how like you know they were making sure that we stayed on opposite sides of the stadium. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like I remember, like it was it was tense. Uh, yeah, but that's what happened. I, uh, our buses were parked side by side, so uh, they we were trying to get on the bus, and majority of them had already uh, was on the bus. So that's that's how it happened. And then that following year, we parked on one side, and they parked uh, across the other side of the stadium. Right. I remember that, like, and, and, like, we only saw them marching in, and we only saw them, like, marching out. Like, that was it. Like, I remember. And then, you know, what's funny about that is I think, depending on how we came in the stadium, I remember we lined up after we got off the bus, and we had to march around the stadium first. You remember that? 
Like we yes. didn't just get yeah, we didn't just get off the bus and like go in. We had to march around uh the stadium and then go in the stadium. And I remember that I, I remember thinking like that, we kinda it was almost like a parade, you know what I'm saying, for us to go into the game. Uh but but that all makes sense now because of what happened in the previous year. Um, but yeah, man, I got to find and listen to that clip again. Or, you know, if I find the little part, uh, to send you, cause Ollie like went into detail about it. Cause I remember, I remember Ollie was like mad about, <laughs> about like what happened. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I have to follow up with you about that one. I got to listen to Ollie's again. Uh, all right. All right. So, uh, you, you named some, uh, interesting uh, mem- uh, memorabilia, if you will. Uh, mine, I-, I gotta tell you this one, just because you was there. But mine, um, and I said the same thing to Carwell. The the, I mean, it was a lot of memories, of course, marching. But I remember uh, when we marched into the stadium and Southern uh, played "Hey in the Middle of the Barn" on us. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, that was mine. Because that was yeah. the first time I had seen something like that. Uh, and then, of course, they were mad. And then they, like, ran after the end of the game. Like, they didn't stay around to play, which I thought that they were going to do. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, I remember that. And then I also remember how Allcorn did it. Like, Allcorn found out what Southern did, and then Alcorn got in the stands first. So when we were marching in the stands at the Alcorn game, Alcorn tried to do the same thing. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, wasn't even the same type of sound or volume when Alcorn was doing. They were just trying to be special. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Uh, but do you remember that? And was there anything that ever stuck out to you about when Southern did that? Especially you you coming from many Southern, many Southern high school. Uh, does anybody yeah. jumped out about that uh, that you remember? Well, I remember when, when we was marching in, you know, they was trying to get us off beat, and we had to just continue to say, left, left, right. left. So, you know, that, that, that was the main thing, that we we stayed on the right foot no matter, you know, what sound we heard. But, yeah, I do remember that. Yeah, uh, Yeah, that's something I always remember. And then I remember it got us mad. So, like, we was definitely, I mean, it, it definitely hyped up the game. Like, it made the game, like, you know, tense. And it made, I mean, it made a good game. Uh, but, yeah, I'll never forget. They just straight up left. They started putting on their hats, like, toward. It wasn't even the end of the fourth quarter. They started packing up, you know what I'm saying, and leaving. Um, But, yeah, that's what's up, man. Uh, So, so those are some good memories. I was, I'm, I'm starting to think about more stuff that's happened uh, during that time. But, yeah, that's what's up. So, uh, let me ask you this then, um, you now at Jackson state and of course, other than marching, you went there to get your education. Um, did you know what you wanted to do after you got out of Jackson state or, you know, what you wanted to do after you got out of school? Yeah, I, I, I've been knowing since like the first grade, you know, what I wanted to do, which is, uh, educate. My dad was a teacher. Mom was a teacher. So it kind of ran in the family. So that's, that's, that's what I wanted to do. And that's what I did. Okay. So, uh, did you know specifically what, uh, subject that you wanted to teach? Um, uh, when you got out? Uh, well, elementary, I, you know, I always wanted to be an elementary teacher. So that's the level I started. I taught, uh, first, second and third grade. Okay. Okay. Now, your folks, you said they were teachers. Were they elementary school teachers? They were high school teachers in uh, New York. They actually met in New York and uh, moved back to Dallas. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. That's what's up, man. Yeah, my dad, uh, he taught in high school, too. My mom was, like, early childhood, like, kindergarten or something like that. She was in something like that, and then she got a job as a a college administrator at uh, Harris Stowe State College. Uh, there in St. Louis, so that's majority of what I knew them, especially as I got older. You know, I remember you know going down to Harris Stowe and all of that. Uh, and then my dad was out uh, in this school called Alton, Illinois, which is a which is across the river because you know St. Louis right on the border of Missouri and Illinois. 
So you could go like past the arch and be in Illinois and there was a school uh, over there, Alton, Alton High School. And uh, he later transferred back to St. Louis, you know, because the drive was was shorter. Uh, he did that. But, yeah, I I knew that I probably I was thinking about teaching myself. I'm, I'm I teach on the side now, but um, that's interesting. You already knew what you wanted to do. So what was your degree? Uh, what did you classify your major as? And then uh, when did you finish and, and what was your degree in when you finished from Jackson State? Well, I, I actually started in music. I was a music major for about a year. Okay. And and then I changed it to uh, education. Uh, so I did early childhood education from Jackson State. So as and, I'm sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. So when you were a music major, then did you want to did you want to be a music teacher? Did you want to be a band director? Yes and no. Well, uh, I wanted to be uh, a band director as far as like on the uh, elementary level. Okay. So that's, that's why I uh, chose to be a music major like that. And then I also wanted to teach school. So it's kind of like a double, a double major. Okay. Uh, yeah, because I know that like once I got to Jackson State, I was, I was the same way. Uh, I wanted to be in music, but I wanted to be a music producer. I didn't necessarily want to be a a, a band director. Uh, but yeah, music. I I mean, at least you lasted a year. I didn't even last that long. I think <laughs> I I think I lasted to like man. I think I lasted to like Halloween or something like that. Like it was it was like halfway, probably after midterms. Uh, right. Was just, yeah. Cause I mean, as you know, music was off the hook. Oh yeah, yeah, I did. I did one year and <laughs> yeah, I uh, yeah, I, and I and I changed. So of course I had to finish all my classes for that semester, but I changed like right at that sec that spring semester. I changed to history because it was way too much, man. Um, I remember I, in that theory class with Doctor Thomas, he had he wanted us to play the piano, and I was like, what? Like what you mean you want to actually play the piano? Like I was like, what? What you mean play the piano? And uh, yeah, and I was just like, I it it was just way over my head. It was more than what I thought it was, you know what I'm saying? Uh, so uh, yeah, I I, I I give you props. You lasted a whole year. Uh, but uh, so then you went into education. Well, that's what's up. So when did you finish Jackson State? I finished Jackson State. Uh, summer 2001. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. I, th- I think I, f- I think, yeah, I think I finished two, uh, 2001 myself. Um, you know, I, um, so yeah, we both was on the five year plan. Cause, yes, sir. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, cause I went to Johnson C. Smith first and, um, I remember they didn't even have an accredited music program. So that was one of the reasons why I transferred other than, you know, all the stuff from like the band stuff. Um, but yeah, I basically came back to, you know, I came to Jackson State with a, a couple of credits that I had and uh, did the four years after that. Uh, so, okay, yeah, so we both 2001 then. And then uh, after you finished Jackson State, then where did you go after that summer uh, of 2001? Well, actually, I stayed in Jackson uh, and taught uh, elementary school in Jackson. Oh, okay, snap. So you stayed. So then, I guess you you then you then became a resident. Then, yes, sir. I, I, I became a resident for one year in Jackson. Okay, okay. Did you uh, was that in your original plans to stay there in Jackson for the one year? No, actually, like I said, uh, I graduated August fourth and went to work August seventh. So. It was a quick turnaround for me to, to to have a job three days after I graduated. Yeah, that is that is that's that's that's, that's impressive. Um, okay, so right after that, uh, and then right after this question, then I ask you, uh, and then we'll take our second commercial break. Um, after that, then uh, where did you go? Well, where what school did you go to for that year? For that year, it was Johnson Elementary. Okay, all right. Where was that located in Jackson? 
It was a, one of the feeder schools to Lanier, not too far from uh, Lanier High School. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. Um, Omega Evans. Oh, snap. Okay. Yeah, I know exactly what that is. Okay. All right. Uh, and then what did you... Uh, now, you said education. Was this also elementary school that year? Yes, sir. First grade. Okay. Uh-huh. All right. Oh, okay. That's what's up. I, I didn't know that. Okay. Uh, so... Uh, First grade, you marched, or you marched, you, you taught uh, first grade there in, uh, then there at Jackson. Uh, what was the opportunity that made you leave Jackson? Well, the, I guess you would say the, the pay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 23 versus 37. So, you know, back then, you know, that was, that was a, Nice look, a little pay pay grade jump. Right, right. Were you prepared to stay in Jacksonville for a little while? If the pay was right, you know. Right. I would have. I would. I would have stayed, but you know. Yeah, I know. Uh, most of us from out of town, like you know what I'm saying. Like you know, we in Jackson there for school and everything. And even though I, even though I didn't have family in Jackson, I was, I was like ready to go. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know if I wanted to stick around too much longer. Uh, and, and you know, Mississippi's is Mississippi's all right. You know what I'm saying? But I knew that I was like, just ready to go. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I asked. I was just wondering if, uh, if you was ready to go, <laughs> you know, say it, so to speak, uh, after that. Uh, okay. So that's what's up, Louie, man. Um, Let's take our second commercial break, and you can mute your microphones to hear from the rest of our beloved sponsors. And then um, after that, uh, we'll get into where you went after Jackson. And I know I wanted to ask you before, like, you know, what you're currently doing uh, about the special special opportunity that I saw – about you because when i saw you there in 2014 uh i saw the video uh of what you know i'm saying you were you was a teacher you was a mentor you was doing a couple things i don't want to let the cat out the bag just yet uh but yeah i wanted to uh allow you to share talking about your experiences what you were doing then so you go ahead mute your microphones uh, and then we'll come right back and chop it up with Louis Lindsay here on the Marcher Podcast Radio Network. And shout out again our, to our beloved sponsors. That allow us to broadcast this great show. Uh, we'll be right back. If you're thinking about buying or selling real estate in the Southern California area, please contact Kevin Pete of Remax Patriots. He will meet and exceed all of your needs. You can contact Kevin at 951-858-5942. That's 951-858-5942. Or you can email Kevin at kpsellshomes at sbcglobal.net. That's KP, his initials, Kevin Pete, KP Sales Homes, all one word, at sbcglobal.net. Thanks again. You want the best barbecue around? Smoky O's coming to your town. Ribs, chopped beef, baked potatoes too. Smoky O's know what's good for you. You want the best barbecue around? Smoky O's coming to your town. Ribs, chopped beef, baked potatoes too. Smokey yo's know what's good for you. Smokey yo's, come check us out. All right, this next uh, particular sponsor is the live read. I be forgetting about the live read sometime. Uh, providing online and one on one instruction for high school and college students in algebra, geometry, trigonometry calculus physics and chemistry visit mathsidetutor.com that's mathsidetutor.com to schedule a session or contact michael okoro at michael at mathsidetutor.com that's m-a-t-h 
S-C-I-Tutor, T-U-T-O-R.com. Especially now with everything that's going on with the distance learning and online learning. If you have some uh, great students that are taking some of these hard science and math classes, make sure that you contact Michael Okoro and he'll definitely help you out uh, to prepare your students to excellence. All right. So remember, visit mathsci-tutor.com to schedule a session or contact Michael at michael at mathsci-tutor.com. All right, this next live read is for Sophia's Barbecue uh, from the great Marshall Dixon, uh, born, born in Los Angeles, but growing up in the great uh, St. Louis, Missouri area. Uh, outstanding food with the special, uh, special flavoring of St. Louis food that only Sophia's Barbecue can give you. They are located out here at March, um, March Air Force Base out here in Riverside, California. And Marshall is a beloved chapter brother uh, and member here there of the great Omega Psi Phi Fraternity Incorporated, as you guys see there on some of these pictures. But definitely make sure that you guys contact Michael. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, make sure that you contact Marshall uh, <clears throat> for the great Sophia's Barbecue. Uh, or you can also uh, visit their Facebook page, or you can also, uh, I think they get Grubhub delivered to them uh, as well. So you can go to Grubhub and look on Sophia's Barbecue. So you guys make sure that you support Outstanding Foods, Sophia's Barbecue and Fish at March Air Force Base here in Riverside, California. Do you like marching bands? Do you love band videos? Go subscribe to Lameek's Videos YouTube channel. Lameek's Videos YouTube channel has the largest archive of unbiased marching band videos on the internet. iPad giveaways, AirPod giveaways, and more. Go subscribe to Lameek's Videos YouTube channel right now. I always love seeing that Lameek video. You, you, you did your thing out there, uh, Lameek, uh, with the video. And shout out to you. He's usually in the chat room every week. Uh, but, yeah, man, you, you did your thing on the uh, on the commercial, brother. So you guys make sure you subscribe to Lameek's videos uh, today. All right. And our last live read here on our uh, beloved sponsors is Bull City Music School. Bull City Music School, located in Durham, North Carolina, and in Hillsboro, North Carolina, is the modern approach to music. Enroll today and experience one of our virtual classes, and I can personally say that they are great. My daughter is a student at Bull City Music School learning the piano, and her teacher, Ms. Janetta Powell Hopkins, is doing an outstanding job. So you can contact Bull City Music School at 919 919- Four two three five seven zero one. That's nine one nine four two three five seven zero one. Or you can go to their website, BullCityMusicSchool.com. That's all one word, BullCityMusicSchool.com. Bull City Music School: The Modern Approach to Music. And this your boy Brandon and Javante, and, and we, we the Rogers, Rogers Bros. Bros. And you rocking with my man Joe Big. For the Marcher Podcast. Yeah. Uh, shout out to them, uh, the great Rogers Brothers. Uh, I had to put this out there uh, before. They are doing a giveaway for a PS5. So you guys contact the Rogers Bros, uh, whether on Facebook uh, or I think I think they have their website, Rogers Bros. But you guys can pretty much Google Rogers Bros and make sure that you guys enter in uh, that contest to win a PS5. They'll be doing a raffle type system and they will be uh, announcing the win winner on December 13th. So you guys reach out to the Rogers Bros so that you can get you a new PS5 here for the holiday season. Hello, this is James Barnett, California educator, graduate of Cal State University, Long Beach, Chi Beta Chapter, Spring 98, QSI 5, and you are listening to the Marching Podcast Radio Network. 
Hello, this is Dr. Martin Rex Kedziora. I am the Chief Academic Officer for the Moreno Valley Unified School District. I'm a graduate of the University of Laverne, where I received my doctorate degree, and you are listening to the Marching Podcast Radio Network. Hello, this is Sloan Tucson Baptiste, personal trainer and CEO of Chessboard Enterprise. I'm also a graduate of Rutgers University, and I now live in California, where I teach young people how to play chess and startup business enterprises. And you're listening to the Marching Podcast Radio Network. Hey, this is Kitty, and you're listening to the Marching Podcast. Hi, this is Hansel. You need to do what you break out. Hello, this is Keenan Bush, entrepreneur, coach, and trainer. Currently the founder of Keen Vision Design and Branding. And you are listening to the Marching Podcast Radio Network. Okay. Yeah, I, I think I got it, man. That that'll work. Let me st- All right. Uh you can unmute your microphones, uh, Louie. Uh we are back chopping it up with the one and only Louie Lindsay here, uh, straight out of Dallas, Texas. Um <clears throat> so uh Getting back to the interview now, you've uh, just graduated Jackson State, and uh, you were lucky enough to get a job like a couple of days after graduation, which is a blessing. Uh, you spent uh, the one year in Jackson then, uh, and then after that uh, left Jackson. Where did you go after your one year teaching at the uh, first grade there uh, in Jackson? Yeah, I went to uh, actually moved back home to Dallas and began teaching at an elementary school out here in Dallas. Okay. Now you, you did that in the very next year. Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, and what grade did you teach then, uh, when you moved back to Dallas? I taught second and third and, uh, actually it was the same elementary that I attended. So that was, that was kind of special. Oh, nice. Okay. What would you say was your most memorable experience then teaching at your own elementary school? Uh, I guess on the other side, as far as calling the teachers that taught me by the first names, that was kind of <laughs> kind of fun, you know. Right. Instead of saying Mrs., I was calling you know by their first name, so that was kind of fun to do that. Right. <clears throat> That's what's up. That's what's up. Okay. Um, and how long did you stay at that elementary school? Uh, 16 years. Wow. Wow. You were there for a minute then. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Now were you happy at that? Uh, what made you leave after those 16 years? Well, upon that, uh, I was uh, going into the leadership. So I left upon leadership to become, uh, start my principalship. Okay. Okay. Now, is that something that you knew? Cause, uh, like we talked earlier and you said that you knew that you wanted to teach elementary school. Was that something that was in your mind that you, that you might become a principal? Mm, well, eventually one day, you know, but, uh, not growing up, growing up, it was always just, you know, I wanted to be a teacher, but you know, as, uh, things progress, I began to explore new opportunities. Okay. Okay. And then, um, after that 16 year period, what was the transition? Like what, what did you do next after that? Uh, assistant principal. Okay. All right. Now, where did you go to assistant principal? Well, uh, assistant principal was, uh, at a middle school through high school. Okay. Uh, okay. So like they started in like, what, like sixth grade or something. It went all the way to 12. Yeah, sixth grade through twelfth grade. Okay, and then that was in Dallas too. Yes, sir. A okay. Charter school in Dallas. Oh, nice. Okay, okay. So, uh, when and and I heard you say that you started leadership. Was that an extra program? Did you have to go like back to school, uh, to learn as, as far as to do the leadership program? Like, how did uh, how did you actually do, uh, to get through that? Uh, I actually attended uh, Texas A and M Commerce. Okay. Where um, I uh, received a master's in educational leadership. Okay. All right. That's what's up. Uh, I didn't. I didn't know that. 
that you went back to school for that. Now, did they say that that was a requirement that you had to do as far as to to become an uh, educational admin? Well, uh, they have classes that you take to uh, prepare you for the uh, the state exam. Okay. So uh, those classes are the ones that you take to help you pass the test. So that's how you get your master's. Okay. Okay. All right. That's what's up. That's what's up. Okay. Uh, so then you were assistant principal then. Now, how long were you the assistant principal? Uh, this is my fourth year as the assistant principal. Okay. Okay. That's what's up. That's what's up, man. Um, <clears throat> and you there, and then that's still at the same school at, at the charter school there in Dallas. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Well, congratulations. Um, Thank you. So then that takes me back then, uh, when, back to 2014, uh, when I saw you and I came to your crib, uh, I had shown, or you actually shown me a video that you were basically helping young people entering in and competitions, a certain competition. Could you tell, tell us, uh, what that was and how you got into that? Okay. It's actually, uh, stepping um where we show kids how to uh do numerous movements and maneuvers uh to perform in like a maybe fraternity like or sorority like step in atmosphere and uh they compete nationally but uh, i started uh in 2002 okay and then uh in 2016 uh, started a nationally step team wow. called uh, the Dallas Home Boys. Okay, let me get you a round of applause for that. Um, I I remember seeing the tape, and I was like, "Dang!" I was like, "That's that's pretty that's pretty dope right there." And then I had to be somebody else that I talked to and they say, yeah, man, Louie got his, his own, they say, Louie got them, them boys, right? Like, um, and I can't remember if you had told me, but I knew that you guys were competing around Dallas. Um, did you start that from scratch? Uh, and then how did you guys start to compete nationally? Well, actually another guy by the name of, uh, Russell Holmes, uh, is the founder and I'm one of the co-founders Okay, and, uh, we both actually had step teams prior to becoming one. Uh, but after we became one is when we became being able to compete nationally, like uh, numerous places like in Atlanta, St. Louis, Houston, and Arkansas. We've uh, attended a lot of step shows there. And uh, we have grades between, uh, I mean, sixth grade through 12th grade. Okay. Now, is it by, by the grade? Like, like, is it like a sixth grade team and a seventh grade team? Well, no, it's it's just middle school, sixth through eighth, and uh, ninth through twelfth. Oh, uh, okay, <clears throat> okay. So, like a middle school team and then a high school team. Correct. Uh, okay, okay. Now, I, I I know that uh you you joined a great organization uh in 1999, uh the Great Y E Chapter of Omega Psi Phi Attorney Incorporated. Uh, is that when you got into stepping per se, or was stepping something that you were already into before that? Uh, that's what I would say. I, that's when I got into it in uh, 99. Okay. Okay. And then at that point now, like you said, you knew that you wanted to be a teacher uh, and a mentor to the youth. Um, did you know that you wanted to then also get into like stepping and kind of mentoring through stepping as well? Well, you know, the step team kind of actually came upon me. Uh, the guy who was there uh, left in the middle of the year and I kind of like intercepted the step team so the kids could still continue to do it. Okay. So that's, that's kind of how I inherited the step team. So and been going ever since. Wow. Okay. So you still doing that today then? Correct. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, and, and I heard you say St. Louis. Uh, so shout out to me. Give us the hometown round of applause. Shout out to the home, the home team. 
Um, what would you say so far has been your most memorable experience then uh, mentoring the step team? Uh, the most memorable experience, uh, I would say we had a performance, uh, a Christmas performance with a lot of celebrities that were there. Like it was a Muhammad Ali tribute. Wow. And, uh, people like Sugar Ray Leonard was there. Uh, George Foreman, Michael Irvin, Tony Dorsett. Uh, Deion Sanders, Coach Prime. So people like that was in attendance. So that was one of the most memorable step team times that we had. Yeah, uh, you sent me some pictures uh, that I wasn't able to get to my email. Uh, but I saw one of the pictures of you with George Foreman. And that was actually one of the questions. I was like, man, how can I weave this into the interview? I was like, how do you meet George Foreman? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Uh, so that's what's up, man. And uh, another person you brought up was was Deion Sanders. I do want to ask you because uh, I asked Caldwell about it a couple weeks ago. How do you feel about Deion Sanders being named uh, the head coach there at Jackson State? Uh, good. Uh, I, I feel that the Deion should bring us uh, a a different type of handle to this HBCU thing. With everything that's going on, as far as you know, uh, George Floyd and, and and things of that nature, but it it, it should be a, a difference uh, as far as him bringing in different types of talents and coaching. Yeah, and um, I like to add on that to myself. I'm hoping that he also gets folks at the next level. I mean, you know, we we all know, you know what I'm saying, we, folks can be critical of the NFL, and, and I don't blame them. But definitely, <clears throat> other than, you know, the performance on the field, I hope that uh, folks can know that they can actually go to an HBCU and it will prepare them for the next level. Because I know that's the biggest thing, other than just flat flat out resources. You know, like, you know, you go to Alabama and they got like a jacuzzi room. And they got all of this like hyped up stuff like that's it's already a pro program or like Oregon, uh, the guy from Nike, he funds them. And they said that they weight room is like better than some of the pro <laughs> pro weight rooms. Like, you know what I'm saying? Um, I'm hoping that uh, folks understand that, you know, they could go to a HBCU and get the same exposure or get a comparable experience. Um, that would make them happy and go to the next level. And I'm I'm hoping I'm definitely hoping he gets some players uh to help us win. I saw and I don't know if you saw he's got a lot of transfers coming in already uh from D one programs. Um so yeah, I'm hoping he put us back on the map because Jackson State was always good for like years. But I don't know, man, ever since we left, it's probably cause we we left you know what I'm saying? They, they ain't been the same. You know what I'm saying? Right. Coaching. Oh, right, right. Coaching. Um, I also want to put out there, too, that uh, you and I, uh, we both marched trumpet, but we was also in the greatest squad of them all, uh, the Deuce Squad. Let me give a round of applause. Deuce Squad. Deuce Squad for Squad 2. Um, squad, yeah, squad. Uh, and and I don't know if they still doing, cause I noticed like when we was in the band, you know, you had to march out of those thirty two squads, and then like the thirty two squads made up the patterns of motions, and they did all the drills, and mm -hmm. all of that stuff like that, but now. It looks like there's more than 32 squads. Do you know if they're letting more than than just the 32 squads on the field at one time? I'm not sure about that one. Yeah, man. I, I be seeing a lot more than just the 32 squads out there. Like, when they be floating the JSU, they have, like, a couple of underlines, and they have some stuff on the top of the JSU. Um, but one thing was special about us 
uh, was that, you know, when we got into the JSU, we were the line, like in the line under the JSU. So, Correct. That, so yeah, so we were not only out in front, even if you were looking down at the band, but right on the field, right in front, people saw us first. Like that was what you saw. You know what I'm saying? So we definitely uh, were known for outstanding marching and playing. Uh, and uh, I think it's squads trying to think. The squads one through five in that line, or is it just one through four? I don't even remember. But I do remember uh, that each squad had to go in front of the band and do the whole show. Right. Yeah, I, re- <laughs> I remember that too. <laughs> I remember that. Uh, but, yeah, man, that's uh, some definitely some good times. Um, but, yeah, man, I had to throw that out there because I know that we be in the chat representing the squad, too. You know what I'm saying? Um, <clears throat> so it's good uh, to know that, you know, that not only because, you know, you were an excellent marcher. Folks need to know <laughs> that. Uh, definitely. But also, too, uh, Louis, man, I, I got to say I commend you, man, for, you know, just being a leader. Um, I had no idea. And it's funny now when you, like, look back on stuff. We were all in college. We were all just clowning. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So I didn't know that you wanted to be a teacher and even an elementary school teacher. That uh, that requires a lot of patience, brother. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. So yeah, that's cool that you doing that and you doing well and now, you know, you now uh <clears throat> assistant principal now in school. Um but that's really cool, man. I didn't know that that's where that's what you wanted to do. Um uh, cuz cuz like I said, man, I mean, we were all just kicking it. I don't know if I ever had a lot of conversations with people in the band with us or people we were kicking it with like, "Well, what do you want to do when you got get out of school?" Like, I don't really remember a lot of those conversations, but you just kind of see people now doing their thing, um, you know. Uh, so I definitely have to give a shout out to you for that. But also, too, with uh, uh, being a step leader uh, for uh, the the step step groups. Now, now let me ask you, um, you guys are competing nationally. Are you in like a specific league? or a specific organization that allows you to compete nationally? Yes, we're in uh, different leagues or different organizations that that uh, connects us uh, to different step teams. We have one major one that we do every year. It's called Stump Wars with uh, 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 Ricky Smiley and uh, Brock T., Okay. So yeah, we do a big one every year out here in Dallas called Stump Wars. Okay. All right. Uh so then that kind of then asks you, uh, I mean, that makes me think of my next question to you. Are any of those organizations like West? Because I already know they're gonna be popular like Southeast, but are any of those organizations out here in like California or anything like that or uh have you guys ever thought about expanding out to the West Coast for anything? Oh, yeah. We actually have uh, step shows in California. Okay. Okay. Yeah. We, we, we have step teams that come to uh, from California to, to Dallas, or vice versa with step shows. We all in one big group. So, yeah, it's, it's out West as well. Okay. Now, I remember some years back you called me and you was like, what's up, dog? I'm in Culver City. Is that what you were out here for? Yes. Oh, wow. Okay. Man, I didn't know that. Well, when is the last time that you guys were out here in California? Uh, it had to be, I guess we'll say, uh, maybe four years ago. Okay. Okay. And you guys, I guess most of you guys are going to uh, L.A. then. Yes, yeah, so or it just depends what uh where the step show is. Okay, okay. Well, you gotta let me know next time you hear. I'm about an hour east of L.A., but okay, you know, well. yeah. But that's I mean it's still uh close enough where I can come down there and see you, and uh yeah. you know all, all the bros down there. Have you ever uh connected with the bros uh when you was in L.A. or you was basically strictly like with the step team as far as your time constraints and all of that. 
Well, no, nah, it's actually uh, some of the bros have step teams as well. Oh, so nice. That's how we, uh, you know, hook up like that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, you definitely gotta let me know. I definitely want to check it out um, because that's something that. I mean, that's how I started the podcast, just trying to get more black kids involved with like college or wanting to go to college in general. And even if, you know, they want to go to college, at least having like a black school on their list, Um, you know, with the geography and with the distance, uh, a lot of a lot of kids, they know about black schools out here, but they already thinking like, nah, that's, that's too far or it's too much money or something like that. But um, trying to do what I can to build the enrollment at HBCUs from out here is definitely something I would, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to do or something that it would be nice to be a part of. So, you know, that's like you said, like I say, man, next time you out here, let me know. And also too, man, I'll look to see if there's something out here in, uh, they call what we at the, uh, the inland empire. So like LA is on the coast, like the actual coast with the beaches and on the water. But then once you get on the other side of Pomona, that's considered like the Inland Empire. And it's a little bit cheaper to live. You know what I'm saying? So like Riverside, San Bernardino, all of those places like that. There are a lot of black kids out here, too, or, you know, kids of color, whatever you want to say. Um, right. And they want to have the same experiences. But basically, and it's essentially how my chapter got started. Um you know, folks was tired of driving all the way down to L.A. to do black stuff, you know what I'm saying, or to do anything like that that helped that out. So they've they've had a couple of things that people have started out here in the IE uh, just so they don't have to always drive down there to L.A. But, yeah, man, even if there's something with your step team or some way that you guys can get out here closer to, like, Riverside, San Bernardino, man, it would be – it will be good because I know it's a lot of kids out here. Uh, that gotcha. to, yeah. um, I, I'm going to connect you to the to the step team guy that's out there as well. So maybe I can hook up. OK, the bro. I got a bro out there. So, OK, that's what's up. Give a round of applause. Hear me give a round of applause for that. Because <laughs> uh, that's basic. That's that's the biggest thing. And again, that's how I start, you know, scholarship, perseverance and programs um that's a, like that's how i started um the Marshall podcast um there are a couple of teachers um there's a guy i believe his name is conrad hutchison he's the band director at inglewood high school and uh i think there's another guy that went to southern at compton high school um so there's like hbcu-ish type stuff but it's in L.A. And, of course, uh, like folks say, it's south of the 101, you know. And for the folks that's way out here like me, you know, you got to drive like a long way to kind of get that exposure and that experience. But over time, there have been some organizations that's been started closer to me out here. Like there's like a Jack and Jill out here now um, that okay. just started yeah, not too long ago. Uh, and it's stuff like that, but it's still like mainly folks got to drive to L.A. for stuff. And I know that, you know, it's a lot of folks out here where, you know, we don't have to do that. Um, so, yeah, it'll be good to get in contact with you or even next time you out here, man, so I can touch base with you, man. Um, yes, sir. So that's what's up, man. Let me give you a round of applause for one and only Louis Lindsay. <laughs> So I, uh, I want to come back then to ask you, we're getting towards the end of uh, the interview. Uh, and like I say, I appreciate your time. Is there any advice that you have for anyone that you wanted to put out there? Or is there a, any uh, uh, landing remarks, if you will, that you wanted to say uh, before we got off the air and you might hear some uh, an instrumental in the background. That's usually because I start the show uh, with music just to uh, to take us out. So, you know, you, you ain't hearing nothing, you know, what I'm saying different or anything wrong or anything. It's just the music that we take out the show with. Uh, so any yeah. landing remarks or any uh, advice or anything like that that you want to leave out on the show? I get it. Okay. Uh, one thing I would say to any 
to the young people that's coming up. Just continue to follow your dreams. Never give up. Work hard and quit. Uh, you're the only one that can give up. So just keep your head up. Pray about it. Just keep praying. Uh, um, last remarks. All I like to say is everybody keep doing what they're doing. Don't get tired of fighting the corona. <laughs> and just keep and just keep God first. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. Let me give you another round of applause. Uh, we want to appreciate uh, the great Louis Lindsay uh, for being on the show and wrapping up 2020 for us. Uh, you heard what he said about keeping God first, uh, pray about it and all that. So we definitely will move forward with that uh, and as we move into 2021. And hopefully things will free up and things will get, quote unquote, back to normal uh, with everything. I definitely think this time has been uh, uh, a time for reflection, if you will, as far as a time to get better with things or maybe to lose or gain something to move forward with the rest of our lives. But definitely everybody's all in it together. Um, but we definitely want to move forward uh, because this is the last chopping it up show for 2021 now um they said and this is according to what they first promoted but the marching band season is supposed to be uh in the spring and they've already released schedules for a lot of schools and all of that but there are a lot of people saying that they may that may be canceled based on how they get a hold of some things in the fall i already believe that uh, my kids and our school district out here, they're already preparing for distance learning uh, in the spring semester. So, you know, who knows? Um, but we will probably continue to do the chopping it up interviews. We won't have the 90 degree show come back on until marching band season starts. So we'll probably keep doing the interviews. I got plenty of people to interview and a lot of people that I went to school with or I've met. Uh, since doing the show uh, but we'll just continue moving forward uh, until we know something but you guys as the listeners will definitely find out uh, what to do as far as when this transition happens for the 90 degree show uh, we also have uh, to be announced a new director series coming out with the great uh, T.D. Hollins band director at North Carolina Central University he wrote a book my, my uh diary of a mad band director so uh just like we did with uh kevin davenport we'll highlight him and highlight his book and that'll be our next director series we hadn't had a director series in a couple years now uh but we'll be moving forward with that in the spring uh especially once we find out what's going to happen with the college football season all right uh, last announcement, if you're interested in becoming a sponsor or a patron to the Marching Podcast, please contact the show and we'll give you the criteria so we can start to pub your business using our platform. We'll play your commercial, we'll post your website on the blog, we'll help send out your information through social media. We want to circle the dollars around a craft and help build opportunities for our schools and our communities. So contact us so we can help build your business. That's all the time we have for the podcast. Uh, prayers and heads up as we lead 2020 to go in 2021. Check out the website and donate what's in your heart to the marchingpodcast.com. Like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. Thanks to you for listening. And remember, the eye is a better pupil and more willing than the ear. Advice may be misleading, but examples are always clear. Again, shout out to you, Louis Lindsay. Uh, thanks again for your time. And I, I've been trying to do this in interview with you for a while, man. So I really appreciate it. Uh, right. And hope that you are all right, man. God's blessings to you, you and your family, man. Well, I appreciate you. God bless you, man. Appreciate you have, for having me as well. I enjoyed it. Thanks, man. I, I enjoyed it as well. All right, everybody. 
uh stay up for 2021 you guys take care of yourselves this is the last episode that we'll be broadcasting for the 2020 year again thank you and much appreciation uh to all that you've done to support the network all the loving positive statements and comments that you've left on the show we will keep pushing and keep moving forward uh, and you guys will continue to hear from us in the future as we continue to build our schools and our communities. Thanks again. Much love to you. Uh, keep the man upstairs first or whoever your higher power is. Always move forward. And again, thanks for all your love and blessings for 2020. We'll see you guys in 2021. See you next time.